Hello everyone. In this video, what I'm going to be going over with you is I'm just going to be doing some surface plots in three dimensions using MATLAB. So again, that'll be surface plots in three dimensions using MATLAB. Okay, so this video will by no means be a complete uh, comprehensive um, tutorial on the subject matter itself but my intention is to at least get you uh, to have a start in doing this because a lot of times actually that's the most important thing to just get a start in doing what you're doing uh, you don't need to worry about a whole bunch of details that come later with more proficiency in whatever task you're doing you just need a starter so that's the intention of this video so going over my code here at the top here I have CLC. Well what is CLC for? Uh, so as you probably well know, this will be in a uh, review for uh, some of us. Uh, CLC what it will do is over on your MATLAB window, let's say like you have some messages there or some error messages of some sort or just some information messages or you know whatever it is, it'll clear that screen so I think that that's important to do so that you know if you do have an error or something that it pertains to this particular script that you have that you're running okay so that's just to clear that command window screen and then uh, next which uh, happens to be like a console for you like anything that it, MATLAB needs to communicate to you uh, you usually look at that window as well as the command history but that'll be your main window that you usually look at, which is probably why they put it in the middle. But anyways, so moving on here, uh, we have figure. So what am I doing with figure? With figure, I'm generating uh, another window for another plot with each one of these figure commands. So that's really all it does. And so I'm going to be doing one, two, three, four, Five. So it's going to be five different plots that I am going to do uh, today in this video. And so for starters, uh, what you use in MATLAB, there's, there's many different ways probably to do it. But what I'm doing is I'm using the mesh grid function in order to define the span of X and Y. So in other words, the limits of the X and Y axis. So uh, for this example here, I have 3.95 and then uh, on the lower limit for X, and then I have 4.05 on the upper limit of X. And just like any vector or array in MATLAB, the middle part of this is used as a, um, an increment size, and that for me is 0 .002. But in terms of what we're doing right now, you can perceive that to be uh, resolution so in my video here in this uh, script that I made up I actually give it a label and call it X resolution and X span and so you have X and you have Y so it's the same thing for Y over here it uses the same format and so that's what you're going to be using mesh grid for okay it's apparent to me that that is the usage of it uh, you can always look more into the MATLAB documentation and you can see more specifics on that. Now next you have Z equals and then whatever your function is here. That is actually what you're going to plot that you see expressed say like in a math, uh, math book or some function that you want to make up for yourself so you can just uh, explore that function yourself. So that is where the actual function is going to go and so you're going to have uh, your independent variables be X and Y or you don't have to even specify both of them but they're going to be in terms of X and Y generally speaking and so then next you're going to use surf X comma Y comma Z so surf is apparently short for surface as in like a surface plot so you're going to tell it to generate a surface plot in these three dimensions X Y and Z and so that will generate your surface plot and then final note here is that I just put in a title 
That's just annotation. You don't have to do that, but I find it helpful to know which graph or which plot it is that I'm looking at, um, particularly when I have multiple figures. So one more final uh, note that I'd like to point out here, and this is just the way that I ha it happened to work myself. Uh, you can pretty much, you know, in this in this world of technical or academia um, tasks that you do, you can work pretty much however you find fit for yourself. But I find it better for myself overall if I start off with a very, very basic, well understood um, outcome that I expect to see. So in other words, I'm starting with a very, very basic graph. I'm just going to start with z equal x. Okay. So in two dimensions, of course, you know y equals x plots a, a straight line. And so if we said z equals x, it's going to plot a straight line as well, but we're plotting a surface. So uh, wherever, you know, y is not, um, is, is not uh, part of it, is, it's just going to be like a surface there. So let's just take a look at that, for example. But my whole point that I'm trying to get at and what I'm saying is that I start off with something very basic so I know what to expect. So z equals x in two dimensions is just going to be a line, okay? And even in three dimensions, it's still a line, but when I plot it as a surface, it's going to be a straight like piece of paper, except it's going to be at a slope of 1. So let's go ahead and uh, hit run and then bring up those plots. So it went through all of the plots, and I'll talk about them as I go over them individually. So this is exactly what we would expect to see. Okay, so one thing that you can do here is when you go up here to this, uh, this toolbar, you can find this over here. This will rotate you in 3D. That's a very, very useful function. And so we can plot. I mean, we can rotate our plot in three dimensions and just analyze it and take a look at it. So apparently you can see that wherever you have a height that is highest, you get like red. And then where you're lowest, you get blue. And then you have a color gradient all in between that. Okay, anywhere else in between that. Now, one thing with MATLAB that's really useful is that you can go to a XY view. Now... X, Y, what would that be? Well, that would be an overhead view, right? Because X, Y is in this plane here. And if we said, I just want to see, you know, the X, Y plane, then that would be an overhead view. And so what you're seeing here is you're looking down on it and you're seeing that, okay, this is where it's highest. This is where it's lowest. And if I rotated it, then you'd see that that is just exactly the case. All right. Now, the other view, XZ view, well, what would you expect to see? Well, remember what we were just talking about not too long ago? If you plot in two dimensions, okay, uh, Y equals X, you expect to see a straight line. So it's the same thing here, X and Z, okay, and, and uh, Z equals X, you're going to expect to see a straight line. And that's exactly what you have have the straight line here and the span here is from like 6.28 okay uh, negative 6.28 all the way up to positive 6.28 and I'll show you in my code here that that's how I defined it so I defined it here in my code uh, x span equals 2 pi all right which is approximately 6.28 for a span now I mean you could put any span that you want now, one thing that I want to point out here is that up here in this other figure that I have, I've manually put in the numbers to specify the spans, and you, you can definitely do that. But what I found to be helpful in my coding is if I only have one spot to change it at. So where I have 2 pi over here for x span, x resolution is related to it by just scaling it down by 40. And so that that'll be where you know where I put X resolution at 
and I made Y resolution equal to X resolution, and I made Y span equal to, to X span. So that is what I have there, okay? So going back over to the figure that we're just talking about, okay? So that's your negative 6.28 approximately, <clears throat> and then, then this is your positive 6.28. 6 so now let's go to a YZ view. Well, what would that look like? Well, it's very hard to know what you're looking at exactly, um, but that's the the use and the purpose of having this color in here, this color gradient. Well, you know that this is the highest point, this is the lowest point. So what it's showing you is it's showing you a head-on view uh, where it's kind of like the curve is uh, the curve or the or the surface is coming at you. So I'll reveal that by rotating it. And as you can see, when you rotate it, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at it as if it was coming uh, head on to you. Okay, so that's what you have there for that. And then another thing I want to point out is that the zooms, okay? With the zooms, it's going to, this is one thing you have to kind of get used to in MATLAB, but it's going to change the aspect ratio when you first zoom on it, okay? That aspect ratio, when you go into these options here, okay? Originally, what it does is, is it has it so that uh, it stretches to fill the axes, or the axis, axes. And uh, so when it stretches to fill the axis, it doesn't, it, it, it distorts the actual aspect ratio, which is really this. This is more like a, a completely box uh, square aspect ratio. So this is actually uh, a higher fidelity image of what it really looks like. This is more of like convenience when you say stretch to fill axes, okay? As you can see, Z, you know, goes up to, to eight here, even though it only plots it up to this, uh, this same level here. This looks like about a five. And if I went over to fixed like that, okay, it goes up to six, but then it, you know, that's where it chops it off at, and that's the end of it. Okay, so those are just different views that, you know, you can, go through and see the utility use of it however you want to use it and so once you zoom in you can rotate it that's very useful you can zoom in some more then go to rotate and you could rotate it very useful also I like to be able to pan through it and take a look at it now you can really see more of exactly what it is and so I go back to the original view and uh, go to fixed aspect ratio axes or axes and then you have that okay so for starters that's your your piece of paper or your yeah your piece of paper your your surface in three dimensions of the graph z equals X okay and just one more other thing I point out here is that in case you want to label these axes then you can go up to insert and then X label Y label or Z label and that's that okay so you know it'll bring up a box here where you can type in the X axis there uh, for Y label it'll bring up a box and then you can know X from Y from Z okay so that's that so let's take a look at some of the other graphs. This over here is e to the power of x. This is what the code looks like for it. Uh, it is just simply z equals exp of x. And that's what you have. Okay. So we'll bring that up. And just as you would expect, uh, your exponential curve, let's take a look at it, viewing it um, as XZ because again it's it's only about X and Z Y is uh, not put in as an argument which is what allows you to have um, basically a, a, 
a uh, piece of paper kind of a um, situation there. We just leave Y out of it. And so what do we have here? We have um, starting like around four, uh, four or five, it looks like a major inflection point in that region. And then you get your exponential curve, which is what you would expect to see. Let's go to our X and Y view. As you can see, the vast majority of it, see this is Y, okay? So when you do not specify Y, then, but you specify the span, it's gonna plot the surface along that, but Y isn't doing anything, so it's just gonna uh, plot it as a span there, okay? And that's that. But then as X starts to, uh, or as Z starts to increase, as when X does, right here at the end, you can see that it goes all the way up to basically its peak uh, local value for this graph. So this local peak for this graph is in your red. So again, this is an overhead view, and that makes sense for our exponential function, as you can see, overhead view. Now, let's go to Y and Z. This will be a head-on view. So we're looking at the exponential function uh, exponential surface rather or exponential sheet of paper being curved from head on and then this is what we have here okay so that is that function next let's take a look at the next one okay this is z equals sine of x so x is our argument and z is going to be the outcome of that this is a surface in 3, 3d space okay now, uh, this is why I chose 2 pi uh, for the rest of them. That was, <clears throat> it was totally arbitrary and just about random. I chose 2 pi because I, I, with this, I wanted to have um, two cycles plotted in this surface plot here. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, we can see that if we go to XZ view, we can see that the sine function starts uh, going up at zero, and or, or it's it's already going up, but it starts at zero zero here. Okay, so when X is zero, Z will also be zero, and then it continues and goes on, and it completes one cycle in exactly two pi radians. Okay, and that's what we'd expect to see. Same is true on the other end of it when we go uh, backward from right to left. And we see that, you know, at negative 6.28, at negative 2 pi, it's here and it starts uh, going up and then it completes one cycle by the time it gets to zero. So it just put out two cycles in that span of, of uh, negative 2 pi to 2 pi, which is what we would expect. So that is that. Let's go to X, Y view. You can see that the um, where where the uh, where the peaks of the curve are at. They're here and they're here, and where the valleys are at, they're here and they're here. Okay, and that's from an overhead view, and that makes sense. Then let's just go to a Y, Z view, and this is what it looks like. Okay, looking at it head on for what it is. Okay, you have your peak here, your valley, then it comes back up to uh, zero here. And so you can see that your zeros are around there somewhere like green or bluish green. That's approximately where your zeros are at, Some or, or maybe even yellow, somewhere within that range, probably the green. Okay, one, two, three, four greens, that's a zero, yeah. So probably it's not even that whole entire uh, uh, what do you call interval there it's probably like it's it's actually at one particular point that you have zero but the colors definitely help you gain a perspective of what you're looking at okay so yeah they, that makes sense here because we know that it's going to start uh, you know it's going to be at zero here <clears throat> and it's going to start going up so it's at that point, it's right below a green. Okay, so it's there, that's a zero, and that's a zero. 
So that's sine of x. Okay. So let's uh, take a look at another one here. This is z equals x and y squared. Now, this is where I start to put in y. Okay. And this is the code for it. Uh, how, what I used. So it will be, let me find this. Okay, so it's here. Z equals X dot, and then you have a, a upward arrow two, that means squared, plus Y dot, upward arrow, and then uh, two, that's another squared. And another thing I wanna point out with MATLAB is that lots of times, most times, you have to use element-wise operations on things like arrays, so just keep that in mind. And as you write functions, you'll be able to know how to get around certain limitations that you, you might have at first when you approach it in a way that where you expect from MATLAB to understand what you're trying to do. So this is uh, in our math textbook this would be z equals x squared plus y squared and so this is what we have okay and so y is an argument in this now and so we can see that this is what our graph comes out looking like so now if we go to x y view it looks like that now we can see that this is a this is a valley these are peaks over here and this is an overhead view because we're in the x and y plane. Then if we do x and z, we have this. Okay, so it's, it's basically a bowl. So it's basically a bowl that we have there. And y and z, same thing pretty much because it's, it's symmetrical. <clears throat> so that is that graph and again very useful utilities in MATLAB that we can use in order to take a look at all of this you can pan through that and take a look at it you can rotate it a little bit more whatever direction then go back up to your pan and take a look at it another thing that might be uh, useful to you is you can go ahead and you can use a data cursor in order to say well where am I at uh, location wise address wise where am I at and then it'll give you that okay so we can go and go to zoom here again so our, our rotate 3d and then we can reset the original view which will zoom us all the way back out to the original view and again if we want a, a more true version of what this actually looks like without uh, distorting the aspect ratio of it then we would do that. We would go to rotate options and then fixed aspect ratio axes or axes. So for the last graph that I'll be doing here, okay, this graph is probably a more favorite or at least more popular, one of the more, more popular graphs that you'll see when it comes to 3D uh, sur uh, or plotting surfaces in 3D space. Uh, this is going to be exponential base E with X and Y squared. So we, we're using X and Y both as arguments here and it's uh, the exact function is Z equals 500 uh, or 5,000 divided by pi times exponential uh, negative 5,000 times x minus 4 squared plus y minus 6 squared okay and that will give you this graph so this one is a, a pretty popular one and let's say we want to take a 
uh, x, y view. Well, remember now, this is completely symmetrical. So what would we expect to see? We'd expect to see that we have a peak here at the top and then everything else is just flattened out. Uh, X, Z view gives you that. All right, looks like some, some kind of distribution curve actually um, that you would see in, a, in statistics. And then uh, we have go to Y and Z view and then you have this. Well, nothing changed except for the background color here letting you know, you know, which view you're in. But other than that, nothing's changed and it's because it's completely symmetrical. So that's what you would expect to see. Go to X and Z, completely symmetrical. Y and Z, completely symmetrical. Okay, so This would be a squared view, okay, as opposed to this being stretched out. <clears throat> this is a totally square view, so this is actually more of what it actually looks like. Okay, so that is it. And as you can see, no matter what view you go to, as you can see, let's go to X and Y overhead view, 4.05 starting at 3.95 and that is for what that's for X right then for Y it's 5.95 to 6.05 let's take a look 5.95 to 6.05 for Y <clears throat> so that's pretty much it so that is all I'll be going over in this video today on um, on MATLAB plots for surfaces in three-dimension space and uh, again this is not a comprehensive video but this is just something to get you started and you could take a look at you know some of what you could do with MATLAB with these uh, 3D plots and again uh, it's just the starter video and uh, for the most part most of the time that's really all you need you don't need to be uh, overwhelmed with too much detail especially when you're just trying to start up so with that being said I'll end this video now uh, thank you for watching hopefully this video was helpful for you and have a nice day